Bacterial vaginosis is the most common cause of abnormal vaginal discharge in women of childbearing age. In this condition, there is dysregulation or dysbiosis of the normal vaginal flora, the bacteria that normally lives within the vagina. Bacterial vaginosis is an infection that occurs when there is a reduction of lactobacillus species, the specific type of bacteria, and the overgrowth of anaerobic bacterial species in the vagina, including Gardnerella vaginalis and Prevotella species. This causes a smelly, foul discharge that can lead to many complications if left untreated. Although bacterial vaginosis is not considered a sexual transmitted infection, it is thought that the spread of the bacteria among people during sexual intercourse may cause the change in the normal vaginal flora, the change in the bacteria that normally resides within the vagina. So the normal pH or the normal acidity of the vagina is about 4.5 pH or lower. It is acidic. This is important as it protects the female genital urinary system from many bad infections such as sexual transmitted infection, yeast infections, and urinary tract infections. So the normal pH and the subsequent microbiome that lives within the area helps protect the vagina. The vagina is actually acidic thanks to the vaginal bacteria or species, namely the lactobacilli. The lactobacillus species are dominant in the vaginal flora and produce hydrogen peroxide and lactic acid, causing the vagina to be acidic to help defend the vagina against many other pathogens. Bacterial vaginosis occurs when there is a disturbance of the normal vaginal flora and a shift towards low concentrations of lactobacillus uh, species, leading to the overgrowth of other anaerobic species such as Gardnerella vaginalis and Prevotella species. The overgrowth of these other anaerobic bacteria allows for more breakdown of vaginal peptides forming volatile and malodorous amines. And this is what actually causes the foul-smelling discharge seen in people who have bacterial vaginosis. The altered microbiome, or dysbiosis, also reduces the amount of lactic acid released by the lactobacilli, leading to a rise in vaginal pH to greater than 4.5 from its normal 4 to 4.5. This rise in pH helps Gardnerella vaginalis adhere to epithelial cells, forming clue cells, which are characteristic of bacterial vaginosis on microscopy. Clue cells are essentially cells within the vagina that are covered with these anaerobic bacteria, the Gardnerella vaginalis. So the symptoms of bacterial vaginosis, well, majority of women are asymptomatic. However, people can develop malodorous, smelly vaginal discharge that contains a thin, white, or grayish, homogenous discharge as well. The risk factors for developing bacterial vaginosis include new or multiple sexual partners, it is a primary risk factor, but again, bacterial vaginosis is not considered a sexual transmitted disease. Vaginal douching, which is essentially where um, people wash the vagina with fluid for medical or hygiene purposes, this can alter the microbiome that normally resides in the vagina, leading to bacterial vaginosis. Other risk factors include copper intrauterine devices, which uh, intrauterine devices are essentially contraception devices inserted into the uterus. 
pregnancy and smoking are also considered risk factors. The complications of bacterial vaginosis. Well, bacterial vaginosis allows the potential for other vaginal pathogens, other bacteria, to gain access to the upper genital tract. And this can increase the risk of complications, such as preterm delivery and spontaneous abortion in pregnant women. There is an association with infertility, endometriosis, postpartum fever, and infections following gynecological surgery. Bacterial vaginosis increases the risk of future sexual transmitted infections, including HSV, chlamydia, gonorrhea. And there's also a risk of recurrence of bacterial vaginosis. The differential diagnoses for bacterial vaginosis include uh, mixed vaginitis, where one's vagina is infected with more than one pathogen, trichomoniasis, which is a sexual transmitted infection caused by a specific parasite, atrophic vaginitis, which is basically inflammation of the lining of the vagina because it's dry and uh, inflamed, usually in postmenopausal women, candidal vulvovaginitis, which is a vaginal yeast infection caused by candida, leading to inflammation and pain and itchiness around the area. Other differential diagnoses to consider include irritation from overwashing the area, as well as a retained foreign body, such as a ta tampon, condom, or tissue. Investigations and diagnosis. Microscopy of a vaginal smear is key to the diagnosis of bacterial vaginosis. A sample can be obtained with a speculum examination or a self-collected swab by the patient. Bacterial culture is not done because when you swab the vagina, it normally contains so much different types of bacteria anyway. The AMSL criteria can be used to diagnose bacterial vaginosis, where at least three of the following features are present. So either presence of clue cells on the vaginal smear, which is most specific microscopic sign associated with bacterial vaginosis. And clue cells, again, are where you have the vaginal epithelial cells surrounded by all these um, anaerobic bacteria. Having a vaginal pH greater than 4.5, a positive amine test of discharge, also known as the WIF test, where basically it's a, a quite a malodorous, smelly odor, or a thin, homogeneous gray, white, or yellow discharge is present. Treatment of bacterial vaginosis. In asymptomatic people, Bacterial vaginosis resolves in up to one-third of patients. However, if one develops symptoms, so what I mean by this is the discharge, the smelly discharge, the grayish discharge, or irritation around the area, well, oral metronidazole can be used, intravaginal metronidazole can be used, or intravaginal clindamycin. So in summary... Bacterial vaginosis is really a condition where you get a disturbance in the normal uh, microbiome within the vagina, where you have a reduction in what's called the lactobacillus species, and you have overgrowth of this anaerobic bacterial species, mainly the Gardnerella vaginalis and the Privatella species. However, there are other species that are involved. And really what this causes is a malodorous discharge, which is usually gray in color. It is not a sexual transmitted infection. Thank you for watching.